Now, a recent story published in The Economist noted that by 2016, the market for healthcare in sub-Saharan Africa will be worth 35 billion US dollars, but a skills shortage is constraining it. The continent is reckoned to host a quarter of the world's disease burden, but only has 3% of its medical workers. Earlier, I spoke with Sven Bale, head of healthcare and life sciences in Africa at KPMG, for more on this problem. Sven, thank you so much uh, for making the time to join us. Now, let's perhaps start with uh, the broad landscape. What are the big issues in healthcare on the continent right now? Well, thank you so much for having me. I mean, three broad trends that we see across the continent mm -hmm. in healthcare that are really driving it and making it such an exciting space to be in. I mean, the first is there's an awful lot of work being done around access, ensuring that those that are in the middle of the pyramid mm -hmm. have, for the first time, quality access to healthcare. That's really, really important. Having that quality component, having that access, having access that's been delivered in two or three different ways. Part of it is a story about new clinics that are popping up. Some of this is about the new mobile health and what mm. mobile and big data allows us to do, right. but being able to connect people to their health. So that's happening. The second big trend that we see is obviously financing. A whole new group of financiers, a whole new group of investors that are uncovering the potential of health in Africa and are beginning to see that as not only a real viable investment opportunity, but also something that's really important to the development of those health economies and mm. to those economies generally. And the last is a real recognition on behalf of governments that in order to have a strong economy you need to have a strong health economy right. because as we spend more and more of our fiscal resources across the continent on education having a very low average life expectancy hurts us mm -hmm. it hurts us because there's less people around to be productive but as we're spending more and more of our money on education we need to make sure that we sweat our assets even harder that right. means we need to sweat our citizenry even harder mm -hmm. we need them to live longer so that they can be more productive in our economies and we need to do that because the world's investing here right so if we take these three broad trends and uh, and then we look at this uh, concept of private health care where is the connection so private healthcare, what's really interesting is that there's going to be a couple of new forces we see. Traditionally, you see governments who move into the health sphere as a, essentially as a government policy. Uh, what's happening is that governments are now taking much more of a nuanced view, a view that we can have any willing provider, that the private sector should pay its part, that the public sector should pay its part, that all the resources, because we have so much scarcity in health in mm -hmm. Africa, we need all of our resources, public and private, to begin to deliver the care that we need. So some examples of that. Nigeria is a very good example. They're following the model that we see in India, which is that they are thinking about how the private sector can help participate and deliver care that's publicly funded. Mm -hmm. Very similar than we see what the NHS has been doing over the last few years yeah. with its policy around any willing provider. So different health economies around the world are beginning to think about how they use both public and private and that mix to deliver care. Mm -hmm. South Africa is taking a different view. They're, they're essentially looking at strengthening the public sector yeah. and then thinking now in the white paper that we expect very shortly about how the private sector will plug in and run alongside the public sector. Of course, a very interesting article that we touched on before our interview coming out of The Economist that quote there that private equity, equity will do more to drive innovation in healthcare in Africa. Now, that's a really uh, big statement when one thinks that uh, cognitively you don't always make the connection between private equity and affordable healthcare and in Africa at, at that. Your response to that? Population in the middle of the pyramid is demanding quality services, quality education, quality health care. As the emerging middle class get richer, they're demanding these new services, and they have every right to expect them. And so what's happening is private equity is stepping into the breach. Mm. They're, they are funding the new type of innovative providers that are focused on that population. And that means they're focused on these new types of clinics that use new technology that allows them mm. to deliver rural and remote care. They're thinking about how they can capture a bigger share of the out-of-pocket payments, so mm. those that don't have medical aid, but still have money to spend, some money to spend on their health care, and how they think about being able to capture that market share. Mm. They're using um, new technology, as I said. They're using new clinics. They're using skill mix in a different way, but the way in which we deploy nurses, as opposed to doctors traditionally, to look after patients and populations. So they are are learning from the Chinese, mm. they are learning from the Indians, and they are bringing those practices here, and they are being funded by private equity. So the big question for Africa is, do we look after our own health, or do the Indians and the Chinese come and do it?